So this week on the farm, we have a lot happening, a lot of different projects here and there going on. So we're just gonna jump right in it. Let's go farming. <music> This week is going to be focused primarily on preparations and updates. So here at the High Density Apple Farm Fair at the Ferris Farm, we are prepping to plant apples here next month. So we are weed spraying the strips. I did that with our John Deere 2640. I'll get some footage of that up here for you guys to see. That's pretty much going down every other row and killing the grass. We can prep the strips for to be nice and smooth. Behind me here, you can see we ordered some dolomitic lime. This is a hundred tons behind me, and we're gonna put that over in the adjacent field on the north side of the high density apples here behind me. And we're putting that out into the field before we work in, work it in with the disc once we finally get some moisture, which doesn't look like it might be for another two, two weeks. It's been a pretty dry fall so far. So we'll put that out where we're actually gonna plant cherries later this fall. So this 100 tons of lime that they brought came in two trips. It's just a semi truck with a trailer and then it's a smaller pup trailer they call it on a train. And they come in and dump one, then they disconnect the back trailer and then dump the second, reconnect, and then they take off. So about three weeks ago, we butted and taped our nursery with three different varieties. We did Honeycrisp, Ida Red, and Ambrosia. So now three and a half weeks have passed and we've checked a couple of the trunks and the buds that we grafted and taped are healed up, which I'll show you guys here in a second. And so now we're gonna take all the tape off so that the sides of the grafts can start to heal all the way over. And so that's pretty exciting that you can kind of see how quickly a tree heals up a wound. So we'll get a little closer here to one of the buds. You can see here above, right above my finger is the actual bud. And here's the side of the entire graft. It's from here to here. And it has just healed over. You can tell the bud is green and that one almost looks like it might start growing. We don't really want them to because they will have a hard time hardening off here this winter and might cause them to die. So we're gonna try and avoid that by really we can't do much to prevent it it just depends on how vigorous the trees are at the time we don't really want to keep the water on them too much because that'll continue to promote the growth but we have such a hot week here of i think it's 90 91 today so we got to keep the trees growing and it's pretty sandy here in the nursery so we're gonna we got the water on here in the blue tube and the drip tape that's down underneath so we have that running to you know keep the trees hydrated, but we don't really want to overwater them because we want them to shut down and not continue to grow. But you can see they're still growing because here at the top, you can see these new leaves are beginning to, continuing to unravel and come out. We should want that to shut down. So it's gonna take these guys a couple days to get all of this tape off. They're doing about seven trees a minute depending on how easy the tape cuts, sometimes it rips, so it takes a little bit longer. More or less, seven to eight trees a minute, which is still pretty impressive. You know, at, you know it's three o'clock in the afternoon now, and you know, these guys are bent over all day, so it's a lot of hard work. And they do a great job, because if you don't take good care when you cut it, if you nick the trunk, or you rip the bud off or touch the bud, they're very volatile, and, it'll, and it won't work, and then we'll have to restart over again this spring. Apples, when you do graphs like this, are actually usually very successful. So we expect a pretty high success rate for grafting all these over. But cherries are a little bit different. We don't have any cherries in this nursery, but we do grow our own cherry trees. And cherries are much less successful. And you end up kind of going through a nursery maybe two, three times in order to get, you know, the original number that you were aiming for. Also behind me, as you can see, we have our CAT 936 loader. We had the forks on the front, and we unloaded about 600 posts that we're also going to put in behind me to help finish the high-density trellis.
in order to pick apples, you gotta have boxes. So I went and I got our boxes out of our storage barn here. I took a couple truckloads up to the farm where we're gonna be starting on Monday to pick some Max and hopefully jump into some Jana Golds. So I had that prepped up and finished and ready to go. We got our disc here. They got all new discs on this gang and new bearings is one of the bearings blew apart so again we're just waiting for some moisture so we can start working the ground where we're going to plant apples and cherries this fall so not a lot of big things happening this week more preparing and kind of going back over things that we had done in the past again we'll see you next week